Welcome back, everybody. It's myself, Ms. Thomas, here, and today we have with us Mr. Olin Harris. Olin Harris is a bodybuilder. Oh, sorry, Martin. I have that. My bad. Um, personal trainer, nutritionist, uh, restaurant owner, and also a purveyor of nutritional supplements and other equipment for health and fitness. We're great to have you here today, Ms. Martin. How have you been? It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. But tell us about yourself. I mean, this is a lot. It's a lot of qualifications you have going on there. I know it must not have been easy to attain them. So walk us through, you know, your career from the back to the front. Back to the front. My thing, I would say everything was sure from the You know, um, Growing up as a youngster, most of the time I know was in track. The initial trip, I tried to be able to do everything for my body. Nobody believed that I would have been a bodybuilder. Actually, like around 360 pounds in school. Okay. Heavy. Nonstop. Was a big change in my side. For me, everything started to do that. First competition. For me, at the beginning, I just wanted to compete. Every year, my goal was just to be better than the last, time. Than the last time. Okay. So, personal improvement was So, once I personally improved, in my mind, I was a winner. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very and, healthy way of thinking about um, it. I just figured to myself, if I keep on improving, eventually I would have caught up with everybody. Did you eventually catch up with everybody? Well, I would think I may have been to pass <laughs> some of them. Most of them. <laughs> so when would you have begun this bodybuilding journey? The bodybuilding journey pretty much started in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, but you know, it started fast, so. It was a process too. You just hit it off right there. You think about maybe five, five years or so, five, six years fully. Then I was thinking I want to have this barrel and things like that. Well, numerous amount of people would have helped me over time. Yeah, over the years. So I think that I like to think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes sense because I mean, no one man is an island. No, I mean, you go through, you do your training, you would have gone on and got certified as a personal trainer, but yeah. it's still a community effort for everybody. So, when would you have decided, okay, I'm going to go and get my certification for this? When did that take place? I think that took place in about three years. That was around the first, first time I ever won this time. Probably the youngest was the first time I won. It's done to the age of 26. So it was a great accomplishment. Just figured at the time, at that time, I was thinking maybe I should have this qualification in case I wanted to buy it, maybe I have to live or whatever. So I figured, let me get that just in case. Yeah. Yeah. So that, it was at the same time you did the nutritionist training? Yes, or I, did did the, I did the personal training for the year after. Okay. So where do you do your um, personal training and nutritional training out of? I mean, how do people contact you there looking for somebody to a system with their own process. Believe it or not, I've never truly advertised it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I guess because of, I, I just in general love the food ways and stuff like that. And because of, you know, multiple things that I do, never really was at that full fledged trainer when you get to certain time of the day. 
much rain. So if it didn't really fit with the knife then it just wasn't gonna work. Out, so but back then um people got in contact with me by word of mouth by the people that I met. Mm -hmm. well, pretty much it's the same now as the matter of fact it. If I advertise, I don't think I'll be advertised. <laughs> <laughs> True, true, true. Because I mean, you have proved that your part, your concept worked. Yeah. Because you would have taken yourself, you know, to the help of everybody, yeah, all the way down to from being obese, likely to, you know, winning competitions. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I remember when I was actually started because the transformation happened really quick, you know. It did. Yeah, I mean, I think my body shifted drastically within months. From that, my doctor found him to have transformed from that to that so fast, they have to have some <laughs> Well, you we, we see, the thing is, we don't know how that works here until in Nigeria, you, you know, until you start working out and you get to yeah. go. So, you also have a restaurant. Yes. Um, so, what is the name of your restaurant? El Tapolo. And when did you decide? Not only am I going to do nutrition and fitness, but now I'm going to branch out into it. Well, um, I went into the restaurant business as an employee at first, you know, much climbing my way up and art and stuff like that. So I went to the, at the entry and working way up. Yeah. Would you have studied like? Anything pertaining to business when you were in school, or was it just something that just grew naturally? I did all that? mainly business subjects. I always was in, I grew up in business. My mother had a supermarket. So I could be in a supermarket all the time. So, yeah, I was probably in my blood. Business. So, I mean, although it's it's quite a diverse list of accomplishments, I find that they, they all seem to hint around health and food. Yeah, I'm gonna I mean, take you you're a person who likes food. <laughs> the bodybuilding is all about food. <laughs> true, true. So it's all pretty much connected, you know, but a lot of times I think that's kind of you say that fact that you food on your body. Oh, <laughs> we, uh, we go eat the same thing all the time. Oh, uh, you know, but a lot of times it's just a matter of the condiment that we want. But I don't believe there's such a thing as fat. What we do with the food and the amount of food that we eat, emotion. Mm -hmm. So everything is something to do with some food for your body. What doesn't work, you can try to figure what doesn't work. Obviously, you try to stay away. So, how would one, you know, because I mean, since we have you here, what would you think, recommend based on seeing how Antigua people eat? Because you, you'd see Antigua people eat all the time. What do you think is one of our major issues as a population? <laughs> um, I think, in, in general, well, let me say I've traveled in the Caribbean and I find Americans, Antigua style of eating is very American. Somebody said bread is Antigua's national dish. <laughs> uh, it is true. Because <laughs> you know, everything is, is sure. bread. Bread is in something, bread is in yeah, somehow. But I mean, do you really think that is what contributes to Because we're not a small population. We tend to be. I mean, I think it's quite the combination of things. We are the type of food that we eat, the fast food, we eat anything at any time. We do bad eating late at night. Um, Inactivity. 
you know, and he doesn't believe in the company because, you know, before time, you know, we used to go on so much. You know, if you want to go to the club, you come to the car. Never before. I guess you guys have to walk every day back and forth. If you want to go to the countryside, you have to walk. But now, everything is that if you don't curb it, then you have to sing on it, you're going to have a thousand. Life expectancy. Shock. Cholesterol, diabetes. Hypertension. And more and more and more younger people. Okay? And I was growing up and never hear a young person. True. But now, no. the young people yeah. are yeah. suffering. And that's because of the diet, how they eat. True. And everybody's on their phone now, so exactly. you used to go and play basketball and football with they're your friends. Moving, moving. What do you think would have been the most difficult part of your transition from regular individual to body? To be honest, I, it wasn't very difficult because I'm only the type of person I mean, I'll be a bad person to start with when you lock it. Mm. And so somebody decided I wanted to do that. I pretty much just did what I had to do. And I think I should have maybe had a better balance. Because <laughs> um, at that time, I was all in. I mm. mean, everything else that was secondary. I, <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that sometimes I also get kind of tunnel vision when I'm working on a project. Yeah. But you said you would have been to different places across the Caribbean. Would you have traveled internationally also? Yeah, what about traveling. Building? What would have been champ. the highest level you competed at? I think I've been to a world championship. How did you do? Um, I didn't do very well in that competition <laughs> because I wasn't prepared for it. Mm. Um, back then, they would have sent out the invitations so you could have just go. They don't look at the qualifications who you are and stuff like that. So I think when they sent for me, I wasn't in the competition and they invited me. But I wanted to go to experience it and see what it was. So I did, but I I placed out to the top six. But I believe if I had ample time to prepare, I would have been better yet. But at the time when they invited me, Probably had like two and a half months of mm-hmm. and I wasn't in the competition. Oh, so there's so difference between... So I was competing against the world. There's a difference between competition more than just regular... Yeah, it was day. like off-season in Congress. Okay, so tell me about competition mode. What, what are we doing in competition? Well, difference from person to person. Mm-hmm. Difference from person. From person, we don't really have to be more there. Pretty much naturally high. Ever since some people are just high, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or they just eat whatever they like and they still look a certain way. Yeah. They have this, they don't say people in money, they just <laughs> look good on what they don't do much. Uh, but what is it like for you? What is your first For me, boy, it was <laughs> challenging because of my obese history. I mean, I remember sometimes I wasn't eating carbs, no carbs for the whole month. I was doing two hours card with it. Plus, still training about an hour and a half. So, for most of the time, I was spending three and a half to four hours in a day. Just training. And how long is that training period before? Usually, if I'm in full mode, it takes me about 16 to 20 weeks to get ready. Mm-hmm. 
，所以这这个是哪呢？说谁呀？他就是一个老老人，来说到你的病人。So when would have been your last competition? When were you last in competition? My last competition was in Tokyo. In which I won. <laughs> I like the national way. Like, huh? I, I, I was competing in 20, but I won. <laughs> That's just incidental. But you know. <laughs> I, don't think, I, I was planning to compete after that, but um, I was sick. Second, I have a company. I was kind of planning to this year, but then you know, we stopped going on. The semester we did shut down. And that's all that's all that's everything. Very selfish <laughs> because I train a lot of athletes to for the body building and direct. Because I was going to ask, how were you able to? Because this is a lot. It's bodybuilding. It's still dealing with the nutritional aspect. You have a restaurant. You're dealing with supplements. How how do you find time? How do you balance all of these things and a personal life at the same time? Is it very difficult? No, I'm not sure you can. Because I'm always too much of a good boy, you know. If I do have time, I will see. But um, I think a lot, a lot of these things have been going for a while. So in athletes, they have no really feel pressured by it. But it's just that I have to always try to be organized and accountable. Because once one thing shows off, the whole thing goes. So I have to plan everybody with Kelly off. I don't I travel with my whole house. <laughs> and then you I'm take everything with you. in the back of me. Wow. Um, plus my big pouch in front of me. So, because of everything, I try to walk with everything. So my transition. So are you like actively dating one in, in the restaurant? Or is it more like a management kind of position? And you know, time of the year, I, I run it for you. Sometime, but at this moment, mainly concentrate on um, gym aspect training, nutrition, and everything. In the restaurant, I still go still do some of the stuff and stuff, but you full contact. And usually about six months a year, you come full. And then the other six months is training and getting all the people who are on the new year to be sorted. Yeah. Sometimes it's a blend. I can imagine. But then, that. but then when that time comes, it becomes extremely heavy. <laughs> Sometimes we're driving down the road at 10 o'clock in the morning and falling asleep. Oh, no, that's not in good at all. In the thought. morning. <laughs> that's not good at all. 10 o'clock in the morning is broad daylight. I can understand that night because it's dark. Yeah, but broad. That's not good at all. Once I get to the power nap, I don't want to go power nap. I'm a siesta person. I need at least two hours power nap school to work for me. <laughs> but what advice would you give to somebody young and deciding, you know, they want to get into bodybuilding? How young is too young for bodybuilding? Um, I don't I think anybody, body, you mean a com competitive bodybuilding? Competitive body. I would say you could be a competitive. A lot of a lot of times the genetics have a lot to do. Because they have some young people that they just look like they bought but you see them walking on the road they're full of muscle. You know, so like most of the time, even while they're in school, they have to choose. Whereas the other person might take a little while for them to get better treated. So Next time you're dying. The main thing is what you're doing. Actually, you're building your body. I would say, genetic wise, it could be between 16. 
is it practically financially taxing when you first start out? Yeah, no, the building is uh, extremely, extremely support. <laughs> the facility is better oh. because a normal person would think they might pay the eat. Maybe three. The bodybuilders sometimes they eat six to eight. That's just food. That doesn't have anything to do with supplementation or mm-hmm. that. But have to be a trainer, so you can do more advanced. And then you also have to consider the cost of gym membership. Gym membership, all that stuff. It's an expense. When you were training in the early, were you just training directly or were you working elsewhere? And then additionally to that, putting in time for your bodybuilding? Yeah, I was always, I was always working. Then my first job was at the same gym. I was always a gym member. <laughs> I was the super guy at the gym. Oh, okay. And I moved to work to Mr. Bowers gym. Oh, yeah. And after that, I switched to the rest. But then I was still pretty much doing personal training. I wasn't working for the gym. So it's quite expensive. So what do you think would be like the bare bones? Like if I'm somebody was deciding, okay, I want to get into professional bodybuilding, what do you think is the bare minimum that they would need to start, you know, to get a foothold in you financially? Well, not just in general. What do, what do you think they need? Because I mean, do you really need to have that gym membership? Can I do that? Oh, no, just to be a bodybuilder. You know, it doesn't have to be a fan of him. It doesn't have to be a fan of him. It doesn't have to be a fan of him. So I would do you when somebody young or whatever comes to me and ask me what they have to do to be a fan of him. My first thing would be to start the gym. Be dedicated. To exercise and training, you know, I'll go something that's where it starts from. How important do you think nutrition is to training? I mean, is it more important than the actual physical weightlifting aspect? I mean, it has to be a balance between, you know, your cardio, your actual weightlifting, your nutrition. How important are they? What does what do you think a good balance looks like? Again, I think that. I have a lot to be genetic or individual basis. For me, nutrition is everything. Yeah. I mean, I'm not too strong. I think I want to strong the finance here at age 90. The first year, I actually don't know. I don't want to strong this. So I'm naturally strong. But you know, for me, it wasn't about how much weight I could lift that made me a bodybuilder. I had to really learn the nutrition for me, I would say, is maybe 80%. Yeah. Where do you find some other guy? That, that guy that, yes, they eat, but they never die for competition. And they still end up being the hardest person on stage. Whereas I'd be killing myself, doing all this kind of cardio, <laughs> eating all this untasty, nasty food. <laughs> Is it really that bad? That I'm bad? killing myself in the gym. I wouldn't say nasty, but just saying I'd be repetitious. Mm. And we did the same thing every oh, day oh, oh, oh. for 16 weeks, 20 weeks. After a while, you don't want to see that food. And you wake up every day and do the same thing every day. That no matter what. Seven days a week, every day. For, for 20 weeks, and they make adjustments, control the cars, put in the cars, whatever. After a while, that food doesn't go to the car. <laughs> You know? I guess that's why it's generally confined to like a short, a short each period 
yeah. before training because if you try to do that all the time, um, you probably go crazy. Well, I mean, for me, sometimes my training not good because competition, I, I just could train for one competition of the day already, but sometimes when I was actually active, I used to compete throughout the year, so throughout the whole year. So maybe most of the time on that, throughout the whole year. <laughs> That's but it didn't really, to be honest, after a while it became part of me, it didn't really bother me like that. After to me, I get accustomed to things very easily. So once I get two weeks of doing whatever, I just don't. So you plan to go back into competition as things start to even out around you? Because, you know, COVID put a damp on a lot of people's plans. <laughs> As I said, um, I was thinking about it this year. Compete for the national and regionally. And then I, um, I have about nine athletes that are national. Preparing for the nationals. So, for me, and then they have all the business, the personal training, everything going on around me. So, I think it was too much for me to ask. And so decided actually not to come. See, I don't know. Sometimes I figure maybe I might do it at the end of the year, November or whatever. But it all depends on what's happening. What's happening around you and how everything, everything can be wrong. Uh, that's, that's just how it is. If you had to look back at your career and give the younger you one piece of advice, what would it be? <laughs> Patience. Patience. You seem to have a lot of patience already. Huh? You seem to have a lot already. Um, <laughs> actually, when I grew up, I used to suffer from my bed. <laughs> really? <laughs> but it seems so comfortable. And yeah, and comfortable. over the years, I've trained, I've trained myself to accept. That's the one thing is accept what yeah. happened, what's happening around me. And Accepting and doing what they have to do. Once I learned, <coughs> sorry, once I learned acceptance with everything that I'm there, sometimes things can jump. It's your time to jump. We are, you know. So sorry about this. Currently suffering from an allergy. It's not your time. It's not your time. It's not very sorry. But you know, I want to thank you on behalf of the National Public Library <clears throat> for taking the time to come out and talk to us. Sure. I know you have a very busy schedule. <laughs> and so I'm just very grateful that you are allowed to come and ask you. So once again, thank you on behalf of the National Public Library. And I hope that the general public will take the time to go out and make themselves available to all of your various skills and services that you offer. Thank you. All right, everybody, that's it for today. So we'll see you next week when we'll be interviewing somebody else. Bye bye now. <laughs>